Here's a roundup of the biggest stories from last year's World Cup. Hi there, everyone. I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English Lesson Number 536 on Monday, January 9th, 2023. If you're listening in January 2023, then you're starting the year off right with us. We're starting our sixth year together here at Plain English. Can you believe that? We started tentatively at the end of 2017 and then really got going in early 2018. So five years in total, we're now in our sixth year of helping learners around the world upgrade their English with current events and trending topics. And we have a lot planned for this year. We'll do our full schedule of lessons to a week all year, but I also have some surprises to share with you throughout the year, so keep listening every Monday and Thursday. Coming up today, the action on the field at the 2022 World Cup. We'll talk about five storylines of the world's most popular sporting tournament. They are the final game, the successes of the Arab world, some early exits, and Qatar's success as a host. The expression is grow closer, and we have a quote of the week. Let's get going. Qatar got the final it wanted, a matchup between two of the world's soccer powers, France and Argentina. It featured one of the game's most storied legends, Argentina's Lionel Messi, and one of its most exciting younger players, France's 23-year-old Kylian Mbappe. Lionel Messi was looking for his first World Cup victory It was the one triumph in soccer he had not yet achieved. France was hoping to be only the third country to win two World Cups in a row. A crowd of almost 89,000 people watched as France and Argentina battled to a 2-2 tie after 90 minutes. Each team scored once in the 30 minutes of extra time. A penalty shootout would be required to break the 3-3 tie. Lionel Messi scored two of Argentina's three goals. Kylie and Mbappe scored all of France's for a hat trick. Those two were also the number one and number two scorers in Qatar's World Cup. When they are not playing for their national teams, they both play for Paris Saint-Germain. That club, by the way, is owned by the Qatari government. Back to the game. To break the tie, each team got up to five penalty kicks. Argentina made its first four while France made only two of its first four attempts, giving Argentina its third ever World Cup victory. Lionel Messi posted a photo collage of himself celebrating his first ever World Cup victory, a triumph he had waited a lifetime for. It became the most liked Instagram post of all time. But even before the final, there were some great stories. Japan, Australia, and South Korea each made their first appearances in the round of 16. Cristiano Ronaldo became the first player to score a goal in five World Cups. Saudi Arabia beat the eventual winners, Argentina, in their first game, a stunning upset 
and a feather in the cap of the Arab world. Qatar lost all three of the games it played, though it did score a goal against Senegal. Morocco united the Arab world with a push into the semifinals, laying waste to powerhouse sides from Belgium, Spain, and Portugal along the way. This was the first time an African country competed in the semifinals of the World Cup. Even in its defeat in the semifinals, the crowd in Qatar was standing by Morocco. As the end of the game grew closer, the crowd chanted Viva Maghreb despite France's 2-0 lead. If some teams had unexpected success pushing deep into the tournament, then that means some highly rated teams took an early flight home. Germany was knocked out in the group stage for the second consecutive time. Going into the tournament, Belgium was the number two team in international rankings. They, too, met with an early demise. They were also knocked out during the group stage. Brazil, ranked number one, had high hopes for winning the tournament. They were knocked out by Croatia in the quarterfinals. Qatar had a good World Cup, not the team, the country. Qatar was a good tournament host. Fans from all over the world traveled to Doha and went home with good stories. The final count isn't known, but Qatar reported about 800,000 international arrivals. The infrastructure worked. Visitors commented on how accessible everything was. They complimented the hosts on their hospitality. Qatar also got a chance to show off its local culture. Al Bayat Stadium was designed to look like an enormous Bedouin tent. Qatar's ruler, the Emir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, presented Lionel Messi, perhaps the world's greatest soccer player, with an 18 karat gold World Cup trophy. As he did so, he wrapped Messi in a bisht, a black cloak worn on special occasions. International fans were able to talk with ordinary Qataris in the stadiums and celebrating on the streets. Some Qatari fans said they patiently explained their culture to curious visitors. More than anything, the eyes of the world were on Tiny Cutter for an entire month, an accomplishment that no other Arab country has managed. Qatar stood out from some of its big neighbors and began to carve its own identity in the Arab world. There will be more soccer in Qatar. Just before the World Cup started, Qatar won the rights to the 2023 Asian Cup a tournament that was supposed to take place in China. At the time, a whole two months ago, China was pursuing a zero-COVID policy which would not have permitted an international tournament. So the Asian Confederation opened up bidding and selected Qatar over Indonesia and South Korea. The tournament would have been in mid-2023, but will probably be moved 
to early 2024 due to the summer heat. Qatar is also bidding to host the 2027 Asian Cup. And there will be more eyes on soccer in the Middle East, too. Cristiano Ronaldo just last week signed a a two-and-a-half-year contract to play for a team in Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia. The contract is valued at 200 million euros. Today's expression is grow closer. There are a few ways to use this expression, but the one we'll talk about today goes like this. When a big event is approaching, we say it grows closer. Now, this is a strange one because the event in the future doesn't move. We are the ones moving through time. So, for example, on December 20th, then December 25th, then December 27th, then December 30th, we can say the end of the year is growing closer. Now, I know this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The end of the year is always December 31st. The end of the year isn't moving. But still, that's what we say. A big date is growing closer when the time is approaching. We often use grow closer to talk about preparations for a big event. In mid-2022, I calculated that we would hit plain English lesson number 500 at the beginning of September. As the date grew closer, we started to make more and more preparations for that milestone lesson. First, we made a plan. Then, we started the publicity. Then, we put up some decorations. Then, we tested the technology. So, we say, as the event grew closer, or as we were getting closer in time to the event, we made more and more preparations. And you can watch the final product at plainenglish.com slash 500. I am not watching any of the Prince Harry, Meghan Markle documentaries, interviews, reality shows, whatever. And I am not going to read the book. Relations between Prince Harry and the rest of the British royal family are frosty at the moment. Now, King Charles III will be officially coronated on May 6th, 2023. That's the official ceremony making him the king, even though he is the king already. Now, my guess, and it is only a guess, but my guess is that as the coronation grows closer, the two sides will begin to reconcile a little bit so that there's a little more family harmony for the coronation. That is only my guess. Things are not looking good now, but as the coronation grows closer, I expect the freeze in relations to thaw a bit. In the World Cup, A game is 90 minutes of regulation time. If the game is tied, an extra 30 minutes is added. France played Morocco in the semifinals of this year's World Cup. France scored its first goal five minutes into the game. It led one to nothing 
for most of the game. Then, in the 79th minute, France scored again to make it 2 to nothing. This was the 79th minute of a 90-minute game. So as the end of the game grew closer, fans knew that Morocco's chances were slim. Still, they cheered for Morocco. The crowd was cheering Viva Maghreb even as the end of the game grew closer. It didn't matter that Morocco was about to lose. They wanted to cheer for the only Arab team left in the tournament. Today's quote of the week is from a Russian composer, Dmitry Shostakovich. Dmitry Shostakovich. He said, football is the ballet of the masses. Shostakovich was a soccer fan and wrote a ballet that followed a Soviet soccer team touring Europe. So this ballet composer said this about his favorite game, football is the ballet of the masses. And that is all for today's Plain English. On Thursday, we'll talk about the choice of cutter, why it was controversial, but also why it might not be as bad a pick as everyone is saying might not be. Well, that's on Thursday. Between now and then, remember that you can get the full lesson at plainenglish.com slash 536. And if you're really serious about upgrading your English here in 2023, consider joining us as a plus member That's the best way to use these lessons to really get better at speaking, vocabulary, writing, and listening. You can get all the details at plainenglish.com slash plus, P-L-U-S. See you on Thursday.